How do you make a review discussion video on a visual novel? I have no idea. I've ever watched one or anything like it. So if you don't know how that is done either, join me on this journey for just a really strange game. Oh, and since this game is about some degree of romance, it fits the theme for today. Happy Valentine's Day, everyone. Anyway, here's why I love Heaven Will Be Mine. Being a visual novel, the story to this game is very important. So that's where we shall begin. Heaven Will Be Mine is set in the distant sci-fi future of the 1980s, in which humanity took to space to fight the existential threat in impossibly cool giant fighting robots. The existential threat is something out there in space. Maybe it's just an interdimensional reflection of humanity traveling through time to make the people of Earth just feel not quite right? Uh, you know, it's quite hard to explain, really. The point is, there's a sci-fi enemy that you can't just shoot. The only way to fight it is to exert your own personhood towards it. This was done by the use of those giant robots, called ship selfs. They fight in a way that's more like a conversation. Very personal, and a little bit sexy, but we'll get there. When we actually begin to play the story, the existential threat is already defeated, and Earth is demanding that all the people hanging out in space need to come back and give up all that fun stuff. This is the central conflict for the three factions you can choose to help as you play. The Memorial Foundation are basically the Earth military, and they want everybody to come home, come back and live a life on Earth, and give up space. Cradle's Graces thinks Earth was a pretty cool place, but it's time for humanity to expand into the rest of the solar system. And then there is Celestial Mechanics, who took the idea that humans being born or created in space aren't exactly 100% human, and decided just to see how far from 100% human they could get. You can pick between three different pilots to play as, each vaguely tied to a faction. Saturn, test pilot for Celestial Mechanics, who is reckless, stubborn, aggressive, and aggressively flirtatious. Luna Terra, the Memorial Foundation's ace pilot, who is a bit cold and tries to keep people at a distance, despite actually wanting to be close. And Pluto, the princess of Cradle's Graces, who is confident, loving, self-assured, and hopeful for the future. I say that these girls are vaguely tied to the factions because you can choose which side to support or betray as you progress through the story. This plays out as the girls fight and flirt, flirt fight if you will, with each other. They share feelings while clashing, finding that the three of them have to stick together and make the best of a bad situation, occasionally ending up in each other's ship selves' arms, or getting out of the cockpits and kissing. No matter who you pick to play as and who you side with, all the girls seem to agree that they should be together, because they are the only ones who can really give each other the life in which they can be happy. This story talks about a lot of ideas. There are the fairly surface ideas about how humans should address the future as represented by the three factions' ideals. Should we focus all of our attention to Earth and make the best we can out of the birthplace of our species? Should we take to the stars and spread humanity far and wide? Or should we focus on what makes us human and how we can change and adapt to face our future? Included in that last one is obvious transhumanist ideas. Like, at which point of change are you still human? Does it matter how human you are or aren't? If something is too different from what we consider human right now, will we always view it as some kind of threat? Now, this game also deals with the idea of being other. Not in not human, just different and facing not being accepted because you are different. In case you couldn't tell, this game is hella gay. It's obviously about LGBTQ women. It seems to be about fitting in and how that should be less about you changing yourself to be what others want you to be, and more how others should accept you for who you are. The Cradle's Grace's ideals could be interpreted as the ideas of if you aren't being accepted or treated well where you are, get out and find a place for you. If the people who hurt you and were left behind want you to be part of their life again, they need to come begging for forgiveness and showing actual love. The Memorial Foundation's ideals can be interpreted as where you are can be a good place for you. You just might need to help others make changes, but you can make it a good and loving place. These kinds of things are just personal interpretations of the story, and maybe you have different interpretations, or feel like I'm just totally off base here. But I think that's part of what makes the story good, and this story good. How it offers different interpretations for different people. Okay, so that's what the story is about, and some of the themes and ideas within it, but this is a visual novel game, so what about the actual game parts of it? I mentioned that there are three different characters in the game and three different factions to side with. This is done by going on missions against the other two pilots, and making a choice each time, to stay loyal to your current faction, or to side with your opposing pilot's faction. Whichever faction has the most power at the end of the story leads you to one of the different endings. 
The endings are independent of which pilot you play, excluding a few bits of dialogue leading to the actual ending bits. It's very easy to determine which ending you will get, as they present a chart with how powerful each faction is at the end of missions, and you can look at it any time in between the missions. Also, in between missions there are extra notes about the world and small exchanges between your chosen pilot and another member of their faction that gives a little bit more insight into the pilot's past and personality. These are optional, and you can make it through the story ignoring them if you like. The game isn't too long either, it takes about 90 minutes to 2 hours to complete as one pilot, obviously depending on how fast you read, and it's most likely shorter if you ignore all those extra texts too, but I never did so I don't actually know. I'm a big fan of the writing in this game. It's so well written that even through the techno babble and ludicrous amounts of metaphors, it still made me feel awe, joy, excitement, sadness, dread, and whatever that feeling is you get when you watch the end of 2001 A Space Odyssey throughout the story. The characters are very clear in who they are, and despite being filled with the metaphors and weird sci-fi ideas and terms, you can still follow what's going on. And I do feel like there's a lot going on in this game. But if you just like girls flirting with each other in space, you'll probably have a good time with this game. I also really love the music. I find it hard to describe, other than I imagine a lot of people would just call it weird? Still, I find it really amplifies the emotions of scenes while playing and certainly feels futuristic and sci-fi. The style is really nice too. The art throughout is pretty and the interface and backgrounds continue that unique sci-fi feel. All the pilots look distinct in both their portraits and mecha, even if you don't see their individual ship selves often enough for my tastes. And that's it. That's Heaven Will Be Mine. I know not everyone likes visual novels, I'm not even that big a fan of them myself. But if you enjoy the idea of lesbians flirt fighting with mecha in space, I think you'll have a great time with this one. I really do think this is worth playing, and I hope I have given you enough of a taste to want to try it yourself. Okay everyone, thanks for watching. This video continues the trend of barely talking about the mechanics of a game. How do you feel it worked? This video is also a bit more difficult to write for, as I have never discussed the story to this depth in any previous video. I also wasn't too sure how to do everything for this video, but I think the best way to learn is to try and see how it turns out. I know I'll be talking about other games in the future like this, or like Tiny Echo, but the next video I think I'll talk about something a little more straightforward, and roguelike.